years ago, it was widely assumed that the vast majority of brain development takes place in the first few years of life. Back then, 15 years ago, we didn't have the ability to look inside the living human brain and track development across the lifespan. In the past decade or so, mainly due to advances in brain imaging technology such as magnetic resonance imaging or MRI, neuroscientists have started to look inside the living human brain of all ages and to track changes in brain structure and brain function. So we use structural MRI, if you like, to take a snapshot, a photograph at really high resolution of the inside of the living human brain. And we can ask questions like how much grey matter does the brain contain and how does that change with age? And we also use functional MRI, called fMRI, to take a video, a movie, of brain activity when participants are taking part in some kind of task, like thinking or feeling or perceiving something. So many labs around the world are involved in this kind of research, and we now have a really rich and detailed picture of how the living human brain develops. And this picture has radically changed the way we think about human brain development by revealing that it's not all over in early childhood, and instead, the brain continues to develop right throughout adolescence and into the 20s and 30s. So adolescence is defined as the period of life that starts with the biological, hormonal, physical changes of puberty and ends at the age at which an individual attains a stable, independent role in society. It can go on a long time. <laughs> One of the brain regions that changes most dramatically during adolescence is called prefrontal cortex. So this is, uh, this is a model of the human brain, and this is prefrontal cortex right at the front. Prefrontal cortex is an interesting brain area. It's proportionally much bigger in humans than in any other species, and it's involved in a whole range of uh, high-level cognitive functions, things like decision-making, planning, planning what you're going to do tomorrow or next week or next year, inhibiting inappropriate behavior, so stopping yourself saying something really rude or doing something really stupid. It's also involved in social interaction, understanding other people, and self-awareness. So MRI studies looking at the development of this region have shown that it really undergoes dramatic development during the period of adolescence. So if you look at grey matter volume, for example, grey matter volume across age, from age 4 to 22 years, increases during childhood, which is what you can see on this graph. It peaks in early adolescence. The arrows indicate peak grey matter volume in prefrontal cortex. You can see that that peak happens a couple of years later in boys relative to girls, and that's probably because boys go through puberty a couple of years later than girls on average. And then during adolescence, there's a significant decline in grey matter volume in prefrontal cortex. Now, that might sound bad, but actually this is a really important developmental process because grey matter contains cell bodies and connections between cells, the synapses. And this decline in grey matter volume during prefrontal cortex is thought to correspond to synaptic pruning, the elimination of unwanted synapses. This is a really important process. It's partly dependent on the environment that the animal or the human is in, in that synapses that are being used are strengthened, and synapses that aren't being used in that particular environment are pruned away. You can think of it a bit like pruning a rose bush. You prune away the weaker branches so that the remaining important branches can grow stronger. And this process, which effectively fine-tunes brain tissue according to the species-specific environment, is happening in prefrontal cortex and in other brain regions during the period of human adolescence. So we, we sometimes um, laugh about teenagers. We, they're parodied, sometimes even demonized in the media for their kind of typical teenage behavior. They take risks, they're sometimes moody, they're very self-conscious. I, I have a really nice anecdote from a friend of mine who said that the thing he noticed most about his teenage daughters before and after puberty was their level of embarrassment in front of him. So he said, before puberty, if my two daughters were messing around in a shop, I'd say, hey, stop messing around and I'll sing your favorite song. And instantly, they'd stop messing around and he'd sing their favorite song. After puberty, that became the threat. <laughs> the very notion of their dad singing in public was enough to make them behave. So, for example, take risk-taking. We know that adolescents have a tendency to take risks. They do. They take more risks than children or adults, and they are particularly 
prone to taking risks when they're with their friends. There's an important drive to become independent from one's parents and to impress one's friends in adolescence. But now we try to understand that in terms of the development of a part of their brain called the limbic system. So I'm going to show you the limbic system in red in the slide behind me and also on this brain. So the limbic system is right deep inside the brain and it's involved in things like emotion processing and reward processing. It gives you the rewarding feeling out of doing fun things, including taking risks. It gives you the kick out of taking risks. And this region, the, the regions within the limbic system, have been found to be hypersensitive to the rewarding feeling of risk-taking in adolescents compared with adults. And at the very same time, the prefrontal cortex, which you can see in blue in the slide here, which stops us taking excessive risks, is still very much in development in adolescents. So what's sometimes seen as the problem with adolescents, heightened risk-taking, poor impulse control, self-consciousness, shouldn't be stigmatized. It actually reflects changes in the brain that provide an excellent opportunity for education and social development. Thank you.